Hey everybody and welcome to another deck guide video here on playing board games. I am Justin and today we're going to be talking about Preston Fairmont and I have a deck guide for you for him. Before I dive into it I just want to start by saying thank you everyone for all your support in the Gloria gu uh, guide as well as all your ideas and uh, thoughts and all that. It helps make me approach this series in a way that makes it best for you guys and ultimately I'm making these videos for you guys so I appreciate the support. Before I dive in, I just want to say that this video is going to be a little bit different than the last one in terms of structure. I'm still exploring to try to figure out exactly what I want to do with this series um, in terms of how I relay this information to you. So if there's anything you like more in this one or liked more in the Gloria one, let me know in the comments. It is helpful for me in figuring out the identity and shape that this series is going to take. So without any further ado, Let's talk about Preston Fairmont, the millionaire. So he has one across the boards and anytime you gain one or more resources from a card, they play, they're placed on family inheritance instead of your resource pool. Family inheritance is permanent and as an action, you can move all resources from this card to your resource pool. Uh, and when your turn begins, place four resources from the token pool on this card. Resources on this card may be spent as if they were in your resource pool and discard all resources from this card at the end of your turn. So this means multiple things. Number one, that uh, this, uh, when I first played Preston, I was like, I play, my favorite archetype is the Dark Horse archetype. And I do believe that Preston Fairmont is the best Dark Horse investigator in the game. Of all the different styles I've played, I just think that he does the best with it because of his uh, family inheritance. This means that during the investigator phase, you get four money without question every turn to use on your fire axe and your mariner's compass without hurting your dark horse potential. And that's great. Sure, dark horse only puts you up to two in all your stats. And sure, two isn't that high of a number, but that is a bit of a good uh, exchange for the power that dark horse is going to provide. Uh, we'll get to Dark Horse in a second if you don't know what that card is. Uh, it's going to kind of, it's the meat and potatoes of the deck. So we'll get to that in a moment. Lodge Debts is the weakness. It costs 10. When this game ends or you are eliminated, if Lodge Debts is still in your hand, you suffer one mental trauma. So uh, this is a bit of a spooky weakness, but luckily this deck, it makes it actually really easy to get rid of. You're just going to have to do one turn without Dark Horse. Dark Horse. Limit one per investigator. Oh, I wish. I wish not. Could you imagine? During the upkeep phase, you may choose to not gain resources, and while you have no resources in your resource pool, you get plus one to all your stats. Uh, this, one of the hardest choices in Dark Horse is um, managing when to gain resources and when not to gain resources, because you want to defend yourself during the Mythos phase, and you want to be actively not having resources to get your stats bonus in both the Mythos phase and the Investigator phase. Luckily, Preston doesn't have to worry about that you always get money without compromising your resource pool. However, as I said, this means that we're primarily playing in the investigator phase. And like any true good green uh, investigator during, oh, I'm wearing green today, I didn't even think of that. During the uh, in Mythos phase, you're kind of just at the whim of the Mythos deck. And you just kind of have to accept that with this and know you're gonna be okay. Fire Axe and Mariner's Compass are continuing the meat and potatoes of this deck. As an action with a uh, fire axe, you get a fight. If you have no resources in your resource pool, it deals plus one damage. And as a lightning bolt, you can uh, spend one resource during an attack using fire axe to get plus two. So for just two resources while using fire axe and dark horse in play, you are now attacking at six with Preston. Now in other uh, dark horse archetypes, your resources spent on your fire axe are a little bit tough because Sometimes you can't, you spend too little and you don't have enough to deal extra damage or you have to use your resources more sparingly. But with Preston Fairmont, just base, you get two attacks at plus four and they deal two damage each. So in a perfect world, when this gets going, our goal in this deck is to have three attacks at six, at six fist without, and all of them dealing three damage. So that's kind of like the goal of this deck, using your um, family inheritance and some other resource gaining cards to make our damage and our attack rate be really good. Um, one thing with all these decks that I'm building for this series, they're built for two to four players in mind. 
Uh, this Preston Fairmont is like a three or four player great flex spot with a primary focus on, in, uh, on fighting and then a bit of a splash into investigating for downtime. Uh, however, uh, if you want to be a more focused fighter, you can just take some changes and we'll get to those in the alternatives. Mariner's Compass is a way to get additional clues like Fire Axe. You, you, um, you can do it once per turn, unlike Fire Axe, sorry, but like Fire Axe, you can spend money to increase your book only by plus one as opposed to plus two. A uh, very strong card and uh, activating each turn whenever there's downtime is will make it so that you're also contributing to the team. Some power cards. We got Rabbit's Foot. After you fail a skill test, exhaust, exhaust Rabbit's Foot to draw one card. You're going to be failing during the Mythos phase probably more often than you'd like, um, which we could, once again, just try to work around. But I think we actually weaken the deck if we do that. Uh, we're going to be primarily focusing on Rabbit's Foot drawing during the Mythos phase, and that'll under you'll understand why when we get to our upgrades. Madame LeBranche is a very strong Dark Horse card and very good in this Preston Fairmont deck because... Uh, we never have resources, but we always have resources in our family inheritance. So she's basically an additional free resource every turn for our family inheritance. And I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty sweet. Look what I found is cute. Uh, very uh, strong when you have those moments where you fail. It's not reliable. And um, we're going to be looking at upgrading this in the future because the uh, uh, experienced version is much better than the level zero. And then we got Lucky. Just a great card. Fast play when you fail a skill test, get plus two skill value for that test. Uh, as I said, because we're living mostly in, in the investigator phase, uh, Lucky is here for insurance for the attacks where we've committed some resources from our fire axe. It's less about the mythos phase. If you're worried, you can always gain a resource at the end of your turn to be active in the mythos phase. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that. And then you have a little bit of spicy tech where Lucky becomes a plus three as opposed to a plus two. All right. Some more core and power cards. We got you handle this one. Uh, after you draw a non-parallel encounter card, but before resolving that card's effects, you can play it to choose another investigator to gain that card, to draw that card, and then you gain one resource. Just some uh, protection in the mythos phase. Scratch for Supplies is particularly strong in the level zero version of all red decks who can take this. It does get weaker as, it's go as it goes on, so it's an easy remove later. Uh, and this is a great, basically, an additional copy of you handle this one, Intel Report, or Lucky as you need. Resourceful is an additional scratch for supplies or an additional lucky. So it's then kind of like a half a additional version of a you handle this one, right? Like being able to recur your good cards from your uh, graveyard is super sick. Then there's Intel Report, uh, the last of our core power cards that just pay four, discover two clues at your location. Uh, you don't need to worry about this money because Preston just makes four resources every turn. Economy cards. Well, yes, Rabbit's Foot should also be here as well. I consider it to be more of a core and a power card than an economy card, so that is why it is over here. Lone Wolf, uh, as I said, this one works very well because Preston is a flex investigator. So when your turn begins, if there are no other investigators at your location, gain one resource. So now, with Madame LeBranche and Lone Wolf in play, that's six resources a turn, which is four, uh, sorry, three, uh, so, oh my god which is now six activations of Fire Axe, which is three attacks at plus four. Seems nice. Take Heart, uh, commit to any skill tests. Uh, if you fail, draw two cards and gain two resources, just some more economy, just to draw the cards you may need it. However, once we get to upgrade, some things are gonna happen. As always, you should have some fun stuff and some jank. Coup de Gras and Decoy are both, to me, kind of fun stuff and jank all like. I don't think either of these cards are particularly bad. Like, maybe Coup de Gras is not as good as I make it out to be. I really like Coup de Gras. Um, Decoy, I think, is fine. I think it's better than Small Favor, which I will get to in the alternatives. Uh, just being able to pay two to evade an enemy is nice in those moments where you might not be prepared with your Fire Axe. Or you might think, hey, no one's ever going to come back to this location. This enemy doesn't have Hunter. I'm just going to pay two and then walk out of here as opposed to trying to kill him. All right, alternatives. More resource sinks like Dig Deep, Hard Knock, Scrapper, Streetwise, Find a Good Home in this deck. They could replace the Coup de Gras and the Decoy easily. Uh, this really comes down to personal preference. I'm not a huge fan of these resource sinks in most of my Dark Horse decks because... I believe, personally, with Dark Horse, your resources are better spent on fighting um, with Fire Axe 
and now Mariner's Compass, the newest edition that just came out in the previous cycle. Uh, however, I don't think there's anything bad about running them. I just personally don't. Uh, Dig Deep is a little bit in a weird spot where it's good, but because we're planning with Preston to use our Mythos phase as kind of just the get punched in the face phase, uh, Dig Deep isn't really too exciting of an upgrade. Uh, I think Streetwise is pretty nice um, because once again, if they're flex, but if you're flexing, you don't really want to be here. Uh, Hard Knocks and Scrapper are fine choices. But I think the biggest, most important thing that you want to sink for is your foot. You're not really doing this for your fist or your book because your Fire Axe and your Mariner's Compass do those respectively. So um, I think that, I mean, all of them have foot. So all of them are fine. It really comes down once again to personal preference. My personal preference is Streetwise of these ones. Uh, say you don't have Madame LaBranche. Uh, or you're worried about dying or you want more actions, Peter Sylvester and Leo DeLuca are good replacements for Madame LeBranche. However, um, Madame LeBranche is very good in Dark Horse. She's kind of like made for the archetype, and I think she's even better in Preston Fairmont Dark Horse. So uh, I think she's worth the time. And if you can run her, I think you should. Uh, a Phantom of Truth is, I know, a hard set to get uh, due to um, supply issues. So Peter Sylvester is very good. He bumps up your stats and he keeps you alive. And Leo DeLuca, because more actions are good. And ultimately, a Leo DeLuca essentially could be a, a panic button to when you're saving up for your lodge debts. So I think either are good allies for a replacement for Madame LeBranche if you don't have her. Small favor could be included if you're worried about enemies, like if you want to be more focused on them. However, my big problem <clears throat> with small favor is that it provokes attacks of opportunity, which when you're dealing damage can sometimes be really messy because Tesla's damage is good. It's, it's very good. And with Preston, this card is essentially free because he gets four resources every turn. Um, however, more often than not with this deck, you're gonna be seeking out enemies uh, and you're gonna be engaged with enemies and then paying, two, paying four damage to deal two damage but have that enemy attack you isn't really a good exchange. Uh, Cunning Distraction is powerful. It's a powerful card and very easy to play in Preston because he gets resources every turn, so that five cost is a lot less intimidating. Uh, having a good panic button like Cunning Distraction also brings a lot of heat. In our current um, draft of the Forgotten Age, Travis is playing Preston Fairmont and he's been absolutely killing it with this uh, throwing turkey at some flying monkeys. So I think this card actually can find a good place in this deck if you want to replace something else with it. Once again, this could probably just replace the decoy because they essentially act as the same thing. One's just a bit more expensive. And by a bit, I actually mean a lot. Uh, both Rise to the Occasion and Trial by Fire fill a similar space of helping work around Preston's low stats. So this could be great replacements if you want to focus more on a combat Preston um, because Rise to the Occasion only cares about your base skill value, which is always one, because that's how it works. Uh, likewise, Trial by Fire, it's your base value of that skill, so you can still get the Dark Horse bonus, and now the five becomes six, and it's very easy to have the three money for Preston to play this card. I think both are fine cards. They didn't find a home in this deck because that's, once again, not the goal of this deck. However, if you want to make it the goal of your deck, go for it. Limb and Learn is a good insurance card after spending resources for an Axe Swing or a Compass Investigation. Um, it's one of those things where you won't get the bonus again, like because you'll need to spend the money for the fight, but you essentially, with Live and Learn, get plus two. So that's one resource on your Fire Axe on the card and two for your compass. Um, yeah, I think it's just a good card. All right, this upgrading page is gonna look a little bit different than the last one, where as opposed to giving like my exact structure for how I upgraded, I'm gonna kind of go in upgrading packages and where you wanna look at when you're upgrading this deck, what you want. So, the first spot you should look is more of the same. We got Geese, Geese? I, I looked it up recently, I think it's, I think it's Geese. Um, this is awesome. This card is so sick. It's a second Dark Horse. Uh, there's only one of them in your deck, so that's a little bit spicy. But now, with Dark Horse in play and Gase in play, you're hitting at threes. You're Jenny Barnes, baby, and you make more money than her every turn. And you got a sick-ass Fire Axe that you have now six resources for because you have Lone Wolf and Madame LeBranche in play. However, you have to make a promise to not draw, play, or commit any cards during each of my turns. 
My personal goal, if, if you break the promise, you get 10 curse tokens. Let's not worry about that because you ain't breaking that promise. Um, which one do you choose here? Great question. You could choose the commit because um, there's not a lot of skills in here. You're not too worried about that. But to me, my personal choice for this one, it's not play. I don't think it's play. I think it's rarely play. Uh, you need to have a very focused deck to not do play. Uh, for me in this deck, it is draw. Because it's only during each of your turns, not during the Mythos phase, which means uh, your lucky rabbit's foot, when you fail a test in the Mythos phase, because we're just kind of preparing to fail those tests, you get an additional card out of it. This means the Madame La Branche should not be used during your turns. This means that this is a good ca uh, card to start cutting the coup de gras out of your deck, because they draw a card when they're used. This also means that uh, Take Heart could be replaced um, with Gaius as well, um, but the... Uh, lost my train of thought. But the Take Hearts and Madame LeBranche also have the ability where you can use that draw during the um, the Mythos phase or the Investigator phase, sorry, the uh, Enemy phase for, sorry, rarely the Investigate, mostly, mostly the Mythos phase for Take Heart, but Madame LeBranche can be used in any phase. So, you just kind of have to change your play style and decide when you're drawing your cards, and the solution to that is easy, never during the player phase. So, I think Gaius, uh, Geese could, uh, oh, I'm saying it differently every time, it could easily replace um, the Coup de Graf in the deck if you're looking to upgrade. I do think this should be your first upgrade in the deck. Second upgrade, I think you need more allies. Wow. So, you can add Charisma, which I think is a great purchase, uh, because you're looking for, um, depending on what you want to do, you can get a Delilah if you want to deal more damage and you're focusing really hard on the damage, or you can grab Lola if you're focusing really hard on getting clues. I think generally Lola is a better card than Delilah. However, I think in this deck, Delilah would be the choice I would use. And then she could replace the remaining uh, Coup de Gras and then start taking out the Take Hearts. That's the upgrade path I would do personally. Um, Peter Sylvester is also a good upgrade if you are worried about surviving. He makes it so that you just don't die. So if you don't have Delilah and Lola and you just want to not die, play Peter. Because then with uh, Gase and uh, Dark Horse in play, you get to have four brain. That's incredible. Now the Mythos phase might not be as much of a problem. Uh, additional resource sinks. Experience, experience versions of Dig Deep, Streetwise, Hard Knocks can find a nice place in this deck if you're looking at upgrading those cards or finding a place for them in your deck. Uh, I stand by my original statement that the upgraded Streetwise is my personal choice here. Plus three foot is really good. With Dark Horse, that's five. With uh, Gase, it's six. So that's my personal choice. It's permanent. You don't need to take anything out. However, dig deep if you're worried about the brain or like a, um, a frozen in fear. Uh, and now it costs zero. And it's also just a guts, which is actually kind of helpful for the mythos phase. So like I think dig deep level two, if you want to pay two experience for a guts as opposed to just putting one in your deck from the beginning uh, is a thing. Uh, and then Hard Knocks upgraded level 4 is super sweet. You get two free resources on it each turn to help those foot and those fist tests. It's essentially now basically Hard Knocks level 4 is essentially just another activation for free on your um, Fire Axe every turn. Or half one, or you know, like half of one, right? Um, Hard Knocks level 0, so the experience level, experience version is level 2 is fine. It's fine. All right, consistency and protection. If you want to be sure your axe, uh, so if you want to be sure you see your axe and compass, consider the backpack. Uh, it's just a great way to make sure that you find these weapons and your compass if you need it, because you want to be able to do it. Excuse me. Um, luckily, like this deck can work without Dark Horse, but it can't really work as well without Fire Axe. You really want your Fire Axe or your Mariner's Compass in play. Backpack helps you get that. Test of Will provides a good panic button protection for the Mythos phase. As I said, we're kind of just at the whim of the Mythos phase, so bringing a Test of Will in seems like a good choice. Seems kind of spicy to um, uh, just have his button to say no. Uh, you can stop uh, Ancient Evils as well, and then everyone's like, whoa, thanks Preston, you stopped an Ancient Evil, that's so cool of you. You're such a good guy. And then you're like, I know. Uh, and it's also Exiles, but later on in the campaign, it's not really a problem because while yes, Preston is green, this deck plays like a survivor. So yeah, 
Last one here, third time's this charm provides some test protection if you're looking for it. I think I removed the live and learns for this. I actually don't remember my final deck list. We're about to see it on the next page, but uh, this is basically fast play when a skill test of your location begins twice during that test. When an investigator reveals a chaos token, they may cancel it, return it to the chaos bag, and reveal a new chaos token. Uh, it's kind of like Wendy Adams, Wendy Adams' ability. Uh, and Wendy Adams' ability is strong. I think this card is actually pretty nice, and I think you can find a good home in Preston. I lied. We have one more slide to talk about simple upgrades. Making your luckies and your look what I found's better is an easy upgrade. If you're running no draw geese, be, oh my god, that word. It resets my brain every time. Be aware of Lucky 2's draw if it is used during your turn. So, I do think the Look What I Found upgraded is a very good upgrade. Uh, the Lucky Level 2 comes down to preference and really what version of Gaius <laughs> you're, uh, you're playing. So, easy, easy upgrades here. Not much more to say. All right. Oh, look at this. All right, so final deck list here. As you can see, the Fire Axe and Mariner's Compass have... Uh, stayed here and they're having a good time rabbit's foot is still here backpack level two we have a one of we brought in two delilahs um to help on the damage side of this uh, and also just like free damage is good because once again i said this is a damage focus preston and that what we're that's what we're doing um Adama branch and dark horse are still here we have the one of gius because you can only have one the lone wolves are still here because more money is good uh the charisma to help play the delilah and madame Lebranche at the same time streetwise level three like I said, it's the one I like. Upgraded, look what I found. The U handle, this one has stayed because that card is fantastic. Running a two times test of will uh, because some mythos protection to help with the U handle, this one is a good choice. Intel report because I do think that card has power, especially later on. Just paying two to get like off a four or five shroud location is super nice. I kept the luckies as level zero because uh, we're worried about drawing cards during the mythos phase and sorry, during the player phase. And uh, if we. Uh, we use our luckies in the player phase, so we don't want to upgrade those. And then a two times, third times a charm to replace the um, card name I already forget, but I just said, just said, live and learn, live and learn. Uh, Resourceful has also stayed, um, but the um, scrounge for supplies left because when you get more experienced versions in your versions of cards in your deck, the scrounge for supplies just gets gutted. Well. That is the Preston Fairmont deck guide. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I do stand by my point. I've played a lot of Dark Horse and a lot of different investigators, and I think Preston Fairmont is the best Dark Horse investigator with uh, probably Ashcan Pete as a close second, but Preston Fairmont's ability to generate money, and then now with access to, um, to Geese, Geese? I've looked it up. I swear to God I looked it up. It just slipped my mind in this video. Uh, being at three for all of your stats in a Dark Horse deck is pretty spicy. Because, like, a big thing about Dark Horse is that, like, your stats are kind of, like, spread. So, like, you get, like, really good in one stat. But, like, this is why Preston, like, Dark Horse is, like, one of the best flex investigators, in my opinion. Uh, and I'd like to think if there's one thing I have a really good opinion on, it's Dark Horse. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Next week... Uh, maybe not next week, but the next video is a parallel Schizo tool deck, so get ready for that. After that, we have a Norman Withers deck that I've been workshopping. Uh, and then keep your suggestions coming. I do want to do, eventually, all of the investigators. Uh, I won't just do just the complicated ones or just simple ones. And I'll probably revisit investigators too once uh, it, it's done. I'm kind of just, like, choosing what interests me. That's kind of my goal here. Uh, thanks for watching. If you want to see more of this, let me know in the comments. Have a good one, and as always, GG's.